Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Green Terror with Elena Chapman. My name is Della, and I will be the moderator for this evening. The Green Terror Group is a weekly interactive community for seekers exploring ways to activate possibilities and creativity in their lives. We dive deep into spiritual dimensions that are all too often ignored in our fast-paced model world. The format for each week features a teaching around our topics of the week, followed by open conversation, which is facilitated by Elena Chapman. We provide opportunities for everyone to participate, engage, ask questions, share your experiences, which they all deepen our teachings. All participants are automatically muted upon entry in order to keep their interaction portion of the Green Terror. Please raise your hand by using the raise hand tool in the Zoom dash bar, and then eventually everyone will get an opportunity to unmute yourself later on in the conversation. Or you can use the chat and type a comment um, and, and I will unmute you at that time. We keep everyone muted so we can control the flow of conversation and ensure no background noise from participants in the conversation. Well, that's enough for me. And for now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our Green Terror host, Miss Elena Chapman. Hi, Elena. Well, hello, everyone. Okay, I'm gonna turn it that way so you don't get so much of that light. Hi, I'm Elena Chapman. And okay, so to tell you a little bit so you know who you're talking to, I am, first of all, a spiritual curator. Uh, that means I draw upon every form of religion, every form of modality, and even science, so that you can get the nuggets and the goodness of all, so that you can better your life, connect to your soul, and even connect to in divinity. So with that, I learn a lot. <laughs> Constantly. I'm also a radio show host of uh, Magical Moments. It's number one here in this glorious Midwest. It's also in Chicago, and I think we're, I don't know, we're on some other big station somewhere. It's FMAM radio. I'm also um, a best selling author of two books, but I'm very excited, guys. I have a new book coming out, and it's called Hello Soul. It is all, a, it's written differently. You know, I've learned something in telling you how to do something and saying there's one way is so not true. So when I wrote this book and also my teachings, you'll never say this is the one way to do it, okay? And uh, when I wrote this book, I put it more into my journey when I decided to start living from my soul, totally. And how did I do it? So you're going to find my story in there, plus some extra exercises I have learned. But I have to say, what's so funny is that you will end up laughing because I made plenty of mistakes. You will feel what I have felt through it. And hopefully, it'll lift you up and encourage you to try the same journey. So in your own way, of course. So with that, the Green Terra Group. I love the Green Terra Group, you guys. Green Tara was a Buddhist um, goddess who believed and or, or who exemplifies more um, living by her soul, the guidance of her soul and doing her heart's desire. And that's why this group is called the Green Tara group. And today we are talking about how to grow that money tree. And I love this topic. I love, love, love this topic because it, it's a topic that seems to be so needed in our society, you know, the clear understanding of money. So I think what I want to start with is just talking about um, money. What is money? It's really funny with all of some of us so awakening in so many ways. So many of us still feel like we are not able to grasp the money. I talk to many coaches. I talk to many people who start these businesses, who write the best-selling book, la, 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 you know, and still that money just 
just eludes them. It's right there and yet they can not grasp it. Now, that brings us to a lot of things. And so we're, we're gonna be covering, in order to understand money, we're gonna start working with the universal laws, the, the, the laws of the universe. And I have a book that I just adore. And it's called Working with the Law by Raymond Hollowell. And I'll be reading a couple things out of here. But one of, and then we're gonna be working with the primary laws. There's seven primary laws of the universe. You know them, cause and effect or karma, okay? So there's one, hey, Carolyn's coming on. Um, so we have, you know, the law of polarity, law of uh, perpetual transmutation, which you know as thought, okay? There are all these laws that govern our universe, law of gravity. We know that one, don't we? Ride a bike and fall off, you know gravity. <laughs> so let's talk about specific laws. I want to talk about the law of vibration. What is that law of vibration? And we all know about the vibration. We, well, not all of us, but you may have heard a little bit about where we keep our vibration, ourself. But did you know that everything is energy? Everything. That's why Einstein said, quote unquote, energy is because at the base of all matter is energy. Everything has little teeny weeny, wood, wood, perfect. Wood has little tiny molecules inside that are filled with energy. We do too. We are made up a lot of energy. In fact, scientists are now looking into, you know, they're trying to find the soul. I, I love science, so I'm gonna bring that in. They're trying to find the soul. Well, there was this one, I forget his name. I was watching a documentary. What was his name? Oh, darn. Well, anyway, he started a new theory and it's between the synapses of all your nerves and all the connecting muscles, there's spaces. And now they're looking to see if the soul and the energy is filling those spaces. Because another scientist actually did uh, in the 1940s, he tried to measure weight from when someone died and uh, from when they were alive and when they died, if, and it turns out they lost weight. They lost an ounce to, or three ounces, somewhere right around there. So what are they losing right away? Interesting, huh? Energy never dies. It changes shape. It transfers like water. It goes from um, normal water that you drink, swim in, flows in rivers, goes down into, if you heat it up, it turns to steam, goes up into the sky, forms, goes into the clouds, comes down as water again, back to the normal. If you freeze it, it goes into um, a freezing state like ice cubes or ice in the winter or snow, but then melts, comes back to the normal state. Interesting, isn't it? Wood, wood will do the same thing. You have wood of a tree. The wood, all of a sudden, if it falls, a limb falls off the tree, it goes down into the ground. It doesn't just lay there forever. No, it starts to, the energy and it starts to really work and it starts to disintegrate and it turns into soil. And when a, any kind of seed comes in, then all of a sudden a new tree comes. Energy vibrates at different levels of speed. Okay, so a table, there's energy in a table, the table I'm sitting at right here, the table you might be sitting at, the chair you might be sitting in, all is energy, but it doesn't operate at the same as us. And we can actually control a lot of our, how our energy vibrates by our thoughts, our perpetual transmutation, which is the very first law. What we think is what we become. What we think is what forms our actions. What we think forms our actions and our beliefs. What we think starts to form what we create out here. Okay? 
And so it's very important to learn how to use our vibration to create what we want in this world. And why? Because we are here to, our souls are here to experience and totally create to express and experience. All right. So is anyone destined? Oh, darn it. That light is so much. I wanted to kind of get more comfortable in my chair. I guess it's not going to happen. <laughs> so are we destined to be poor? No, no. And it's so funny because so many of us settle for that or settle for a lack. Lack, lack means I do not have enough. Lack is something that we have um, in, our, in our belief system. Our beliefs form our, our thoughts. It's our subconscious mind, all the things we learned from the time we were one to six or even more about money, about um, relationships, about ourselves, about our world, all are formed. And this is the thing, when we have a feeling of lack, if our parents had a feeling of lack. Now, I'll use myself as an example, okay? Because I'm good at that, I know myself anyway. So when I was growing up, my dad um, was a self-starter and he worked his way up from the bottom up to being a vice president of, of one of the large um, stock firms and in the financial advisor firms now, they call them, they used to call them stock brokerages, um, all the way up to vice president in my state where I was growing up. Now, we had poor days. I mean, really poor, like, you know, we, we were poor. And then we had really good days. And that's because he was working himself up. Now, this is the thing, there was always with my mom, this lack, always this worry, Ugh, that belief that there was never enough, never enough. And I'll tell you what, it affected every part of our lives to, to the, what we bought, you know, can't do that, can't do that. But that lack also hurt us. Because anytime my dad would try to make opportunities in some way, she would pull him back, which probably would have helped us. And I also remember that that lack, even though we had more than enough money, created a world of secrecy. You know what I mean? Like I could never know. I never learned about money. I just knew that it was something that people worried about all the time. Interesting, isn't it? I had to change my mindset. So when I change my mindset about what money is, and as a spiritual curator, I, you, you start to understand, I started to understand more and more. And I thought, my gosh, that's what causes all the grief in this world. Because if wood on a tree, a table, a chair, everything we see is basically energy altered by our perception, Two people can look at one tree and see something different. And so it alters our perception. Money is just paper and metal. That's all it is. It's energy. It's energy just like the tree. And because of that, it just is. It's not good. It's not evil. It's not given just to some and not anyone else. It's not, it's not the saving grace and it's not the worst thing in the world. It simply is money. It's what we perceive, we believe about ourselves, our world, and how we relate to that money. That's the changing difference. Okay, I'd like to open up the phone, uh, the, the phones, the, uh, the uh, whatever, our mics, so that people can comment, give their ideas. I'm going to be talking about 
how to, you know, after I get a little bit of this discussion, so you guys know that this isn't all of it, I'm going to give a, a few ways using two other um, laws of the universe, show you two other way, ways that you can start to open up to that money. Plus, I'm going to add one more thing that I know is really important for money. Okay, so let's open up the, the mics and talk. And my question is, where are you on that growing that money tree? How do you feel about money, basically? Anyone want to chime in? Well, this is Della. I'll start. Okay. Um, well, I, I, I had to cool. learn how to. I had to learn how to change my viewpoint on money, um, just because I grew up as a military brat, and so I had more of a positive view because my mother and father didn't make a lot of money. Um, the army doesn't pay an NCO a lot of money. And then she taught within the DOD school system and not colleges and university. So I grew up in a house that you may say was financially deficit. However, the way that they managed the money, we did not know lack. We didn't go without. We didn't, you know, I don't think we missed out on anything um, in our childhood. Um, however, as you transition, as I transitioned as an adult, and I got to see a different life, different people, different areas. And so in my 20s, there began a, a, I guess, a, a learning of fear and lack. But now I've reverted back to the belief of I have more than enough, I am more than enough. So therefore, I don't believe that I will ever run out. And I'm teaching that to my children as well. And so I strongly agree with you when you, when you, um, explain that money is just what it is it's just a source it's an it's an ends to mean it doesn't make you or your family who you are or who you're not um and once people really look at that as a definition versus um something to value yourself compared to how much money you have or how much money you don't mm -hmm. then i think we'll all get um more of what it is that we want in life whether it takes or costs money or not we'll have more of a peace more of a um, satisf satisfaction, more of a contentment with how we're living and where we're at and what we're doing with the resources that we do have. Now, what, when, did you, when did you have like um, this feeling of lack? You said there was a period of time. When, when I left the nest. <laughs> oh. When I, yeah, when I first fair. left the nest. And my parents did a really good job making me and my brother had a brother that was a year older than me. And so they, they did a fantastic job of making sure we knew the basics of how, the, you know, what checking accounts were, how to balance it, how to work, how to, you know, bring money in and stuff like that. However, once you left, the, once I left the nest and had to put that learning into practice, you know, the fear set in for maybe the first year or two. Yeah. But then, like I said, after, after my late twenties into my thirties, I was able to recalibrate and understand what I learned and apply it to my, my life. So therefore, you know, I have to say, yeah, but it was, it was initially when I first, first left the house. Yeah, that's not, that's good. You turned your, yourself around quick. Anybody else? Pat Davis, come on in. So, okay, so everybody else is kind of quiet. You can, un, you can undo the uh, mics. Della. Yeah, I did. I did. I, um, I asked so that them. people can feel free to, if they want to, if they want to uh, talk. Yeah. Okay. So everybody is just going to be listening. Okay. All right. Well, so everybody agrees with me. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. All right. So let's begin to talk. So We've got this little vibration out there, which is this money floating around. And we are here. And how do we get from here to there? And that's what I'll, I'll show you a little bit about. Money, okay, first of all, if you, okay, I, I have been studying with two people. Uh, most of my life. I've had others, but the two major ones were Wayne Dyer, and I don't know if you know him or not, and then 
I uh, found my way to Bob Proctor. Now Bob Proctor teaches you, you know, he's, he's of the secret, you know, so he's very much that you can create anything you want in, in the laws of the universe. And he is all about making money. Okay. So he is one that sees money as that's just as it is anything. Now, so when I was there, and I spent a lot of time as he was my mentor for quite a while. I saw this mindset that would develop in with people. And I would see people fail. I would see people not being able to achieve their dreams. I saw people actually lose money. I saw people not be able to handle money. And I figured it out because their mindset, they were trying to get their vibration onto a money vibration, but they didn't understand what the money vibration was. See, this is the thing. If your vibration is in a place of lack, then believe it or not, your thoughts are feeding it, your actions are there, everything is feeding into that lack. Now, here's the thing. You also give off a lot of energy in that vibration. So, and if you don't believe me on that, try going into a coffee house when you're feeling really, really good and just let it be really, really good. You don't have to go in singing and dancing. Just let it feel. And you'll see how many people start coming up to you automatically. But if you go in just angry, and you'll see that all of a sudden people will walk away from you and you don't have to do anything. That is the energy you give off. So if you're giving off lack or you're on this thing, I got to make money, I got to make money, I got to make money, which is scarcity. That's a vibration of scarcity. I got to make money. And so I'm going to make that sale. I'm going to make that sale. I'm going to work three or four jobs and they get onto this money, 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 but they find themselves losing because the money vibration is not the vibration to make money. That's what I learned. Interesting, isn't it? <laughs> so it's a different vibration. It's a vibration of feeling the abundance. Now, I'm gonna read something from this book real quick. This is from the uh, Working with the Law, if you're new, and Raymond Hollowell. This is a look at this book. I like, I'm it's, I've got pages coming out. I mean, the, the next page here is like, I loved this book. This is one of the first books I've read, read when I was very young. Giving, it's called. To get he had tried, yet his store was still meager. To a wise man he cried in a voice keen and eager. Pray, tell me how I may successfully live. And the wise man replied, to get, you must give. As to giving, he said, what have I to give? I've scarce enough bread, and of course one must live. But I would partake of life's bountiful store, came the wise man's response. Then you must give more. The lessons he learned to get was forgotten toward mankind he turned with love and new begotten. As he gave of himself an unselfish living, then joy crowned his days, for he grew rich in giving. Now, there are many ways to start to increase the, the flow of your money tree. But there is a special law you have to understand first, and that is the law of receiving. It's called the law of receiving. And Luke from the Bible, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure runneth over. So when you're on the money vibration, I got to make money, I got to make money, I got to make money. It's a get, 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 get. That breaks 
a flow in the universe. Everything runs in the universe in a constant flow. Energy never stays still. Never. It always moves, it flows, you know, and if you are taking, 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 you may, you may make money. There are people that do. I have known so many people of very big wealth. I have seen people who have made money who are take, 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 take. And I've seen people who have made even more money by what they do to help humanity or people. And we're gonna talk more about that. The person who takes, takes, takes and has that money, 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 money mentality goes from lack to I gotta save. You know, it's all a hoarding. It's all, and it, all of a sudden, you see it start to affect every part of their life. They turn out to be older and they turn into hoarders. They, they keep their money and you can't get my money. And before you know it, the abundance of all life starts to fall apart because they don't trust people. They don't trust when they want to buy something. They think everyone is after their money. It's a very awful place to live. And they don't need to live that way. We're meant to enjoy and celebrate all the materials we create on this earth. Now, let's talk about this other person over here. The one who celebrates all of life, who celebrates um, giving and receiving, keeping that flow of energy alive. Now, does that mean you have to give your last penny? No. You know, you have to have common sense. Does it mean you have to give money? No. 95% of the population doesn't get what 5% of the population gets. The 5% of the population are the people who are the creators. They're the people who created like Steve Jobs, the cell phone, the person who creates um, Vera Bradley bags that everybody loved. Um, what is it? Uh, the, the hot dog stands that, that people love, the McDonald's that people seem to love, the uh, Chick-fil-A that seems to be taking over all over here, the, um, all the different things, or people who have created ovens, um, creators, people who have done things to make other people's lives easier, happier, and give, give. Give them some ease in their life, give some flow, give some knowledge, give some growth, give something. And when you give, then people will then give money. Now, then the flow is right there. Do you see? When I wake up in the morning, I don't say, oh, I'm gonna go make a million. I could, but I don't. I say, how can I serve? Universe, show me, lead me, how can I serve the very best? And when you start to do that, you start to open up to where the money vibration is because there is an openness in your heart and the energy can start flowing in. Sounds so simple, doesn't it? Until that anxiety and that belief comes in. So you do have to change perpetual transmutation. You have to change the thoughts. If you have lack, if you come from a family like me, which hid the money and just always made it look like we were poor. And if you have this, um, sense that you don't have enough. That's where you have to do affirmations. Like Della said in her comment, and thank you Della for sharing, I will always have enough money. I will always have enough money for what I need and for what I want. 
and you ingrain these new beliefs into your system. And that's one that is swallowable. If you have an affirmation that's sort of swallowable, it can actually change your belief system faster. And what do you do? You say it when you get up, you say it when you go to bed, you say it during the day, you say it in the mirror. That's a great way, looking right into your eyes. You say these affirmations to change your way of believing what money really is for. And truly, if you believe that you come from greatness, which you do, you know, we were all in that wonderful world and we came here, okay, to live here. We are from greatness. We have derived from greatness, whether that's the universe, source, whatever you think, it is greatness. And we are meant for our own greatness. We just have to learn how to get it, to gain it, or become it. That's even better. When we believe it of ourselves, that's what you need to do. Okay, so affirmations are a wonderful way to start changing that belief system. The other thing is, Sound the trumpets, how, wait, I'm trying to remember from the Bible. Sound the trumpets, sound the, well, you're, I'm not doing it very well. <laughs> All right, so with praise, praise, praise in song. In every part of the Bible, it brings that up. In every part of every religious manuscript or book, it talks about praising with music, with love, with open-heartedness, with just abandonment. And it's living with joy in your heart. How do we do that? Gratefulness, folks. Start practicing gratefulness. Start seeing that, that everything is for all the things that you think are wrong with you, right, in your life, there are more that is right with your life. And gratefulness will wake you up to that and start enjoying what is going on in the world. Not the news, not the elections, <laughs> but your world, your kids maybe, your pets, the garden you might sow, the people you meet when you go to a coffee house or a restaurant, people you meet who are your neighbors or the kids you may teach or whatever it is, the people you might have at work. These are people who we should feel grateful for and enjoy life and start to celebrate the relationships the life around us. My gosh, if anything, be grateful that every day we get a new sky, every single day. And when you look up at that sky and you say thankful and you see the beauty and the awesomeness of it, it will open you up to be on that plane of giving and something so much more to this living than all the little smallness that is a complication. And you will start to praise. Gratitude is praising. And that's where we need to lead our life to that wondrous awe. This is the cool thing. When you open up to that awe and you start to really feel rejoicing and happy, then the ideas of how to serve, the things to create, the things that will suddenly download into your mind will come out in like, oh my gosh, that's what I need to give to people. That's what I need to do. 
And that, my friends, is when you're on the right vibration to grow that money tree. It is in giving that we receive. It is in the praising and the joy that the life of abundance will open up to us. We cannot gain. Nobody wants to be that old man sitting in the corner of a restaurant thinking everybody is after his money and he's growing old and decrepit alone. And I, I mean, I'm drawing from a real person. I am not making this up, okay? And I'll tell you, nobody wants to be that. We wanna be the person who celebrates all of life, who can create ideas at any moment. I have known people who have made lots of money, then all of a sudden they lost it for whatever reason. It didn't, it didn't phase them. They didn't go, oh my God, I lost all my money, I'm poor. No, never. They just, they celebrated life. They allowed themselves to have gratitude. I was amazed how much gratitude this one man had. And before I know it, he's right up there again. We're missing the point when we focus only on getting the money. We miss the point when we think we deserve we miss the point when we think we are getting, what, stealing a deal. Believe it or not, I know you're thinking, what, Elena? Yes, I'm not kidding. Because part of giving is understanding that that is an exchange. And trying to get something for nothing is a lack. It's a lack mindset. It really is, folks. Whenever we're trying to, you know, I like, look at the looters, people who loot, you know? What is that? That is breaking the cycle. That is breaking the flow of the universe. It's I take, I take, I take, I deserve, I deserve, I deserve. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. It's lack, it's greed, it's, it's total everything that's lack. And they're right down on a very low vibration. So when we think that we are, when we think that we are so-called stealing a deal, back up and look. It's so funny. I was listening to a shaman, um, a video on a shaman's video, okay? And then I looked at the comments and this guy said, Oh my gosh, he should be giving his services free. He's a shaman. Why? If the shaman was just giving, 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 with, and, and giving with an open heart, and that's really great, but he would be breaking a universal law, an opportunity to allow that person to also experience the giving. That's why giving and receiving is so incredibly important because it gives both parties, both parties an opportunity to flow in the universe of giving and receiving. When we can wrap our heads around that, we can all of a sudden start to think, free ourselves from that lack, that we deserve this for nothing because there's nothing that's free. Everything has to go with the flow of giving and receiving. So you have to open yourself up to this. And like I said, it is that wonderful feeling of rejoicing, feeling the happiness, the gratefulness, and understanding the law of receiving and giving. So I know there must be questions. We've talked about a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And perpetual transmutation. Sorry, I forgot about that. Yes. So we talked about three and law of vibration. We covered four of the seven, you know? I can't even tell you about law of polarity. How does that rely on money? Oh my gosh. Lack. 
Feeling lack is very strong. It's a very, very strong energy. It can consume you. I was helping my mother's getting dementia and I'm helping her. She has more than enough money in her account to take care of everything, okay? But when you talk to her, she has nothing, nothing. What does that do to her? And it's a strong energy because it worry, it, it affects you in worry. It affects you in, in your body. Every cell feels it. And she actually gets physically ill because of it. But when you're also in that total flow of giving and receiving and serving and understanding the flow and rejoicing in all of life. So not just money comes into your life, but the relationships, the love, the, I mean, just the gifts of the universe come to you. That is also powerful. And those are the two ends of polarity of the money. What end of that do you want to be on? It's interesting. So I guess what I'm asking you is to take a look in your life at where you're letting that lack mindset, that lack vibration drag you down from all the gratitude you want to have and understanding down into the lowest vibration possible. BJ, you had a question. I saw you raise your hand. Can we unmute everybody, Della? Sorry, that light is too, too, too blaring. Okay. Okay. Okay, I believe that my question, hi everyone. Um, my question is more in the form of a statement. Um, I love to help people. I really do. It brings me so much internal happiness. However, I seem like uh, I'm tilting more of the on the receiving side of it. Um, it's just I don't get a whole lot of receiving of help. Um, not that I can see. Um, and then I feel kind of like foolish. I do get, um, I do get like um, spiritual help a lot, but not so much physical. Um, and then I, I kind of feel used um, inside of that. So if, if you can grab a question out of that, Elena, or others even, I can't hear you. I can't hear either. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. I can't hear Elena either. Elena, you're muted for some reason. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Why is it doing this? Okay. Now, there now we can hear you. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm, I mean, I, somehow someone, something muted me. All right. So here we go. Yes. That's a very, very good one. Um, all right. Um, this is the thing when we are, it, we can have all that wonderful. Remember when I said serving and serving is also understanding our own worth. Okay. Okay. So when we, for instance, okay, now, so, you know, you, you're, you don't have your own business. You work for and and you were and you were working for someone and mm -hmm. and that's fine lots of people like that paycheck that's fantastic mm -hmm. but you are working you come into contract with someone you are working for the amount that they are going to pay for your service mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. it's up to you to know your worth to say am i worth that I should be worth more. Mm -hmm. We we have to have that feeling of I know what I bring to the table. 
I know what I bring to the table. It's just like being in business. It's just like, for me, when I help people to connect to their soul or I connect to, or I help them to actually be able to open themselves to be able to really connect with divinity like they never have before. To always feel that, that place of peace, to always, always feel that place of being guided, to always feel that assurance that they are not alone going through anything. I know what I bring to the table. And so when I, when I do a service, I know what I can charge that's fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you're going to an employer, you have to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this, and that when you're, when you're going and you're working for an institution, they're set in their ways. Mm -hmm. So it's shopping around. Do you see? Yes, I do in, in, in work ethics, but I'm, I'm speaking more like a friend or um, the lady across, uh, uh, across the street, the old lady across the street, or the panhandler that's hungry, or a friend of mine's aunt, or people, as opposed to so in a work environment. Used? Why do you feel used when you give to them? Because say I um, need it, I, because I have arthritis on my spine and say my fiance rubbed my back three days in a row and um, then say um, just hypothetical um, examples and say he needed to be I don't know helped across the street or something and he said well bae I need you to walk to the the mailbox to get the mail today. I just can't do it. I know I usually do. And I go do it for him two in, two weeks in a row. And and um, he never makes mention of me, but he always says, well, I helped you with your back three days in a row, but you never helped me. You know, and I've overcompensated myself with the lady down the street, with my fiance, with this person and that person, but nobody's looking out for Felicia, but I've helped all these people. So I mean, helping people as opposed to doing my job or- Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. And then, yeah, like that. But the gifts have come to you in other ways. The gifts True. don't come from the people that you are doing, you know, number one, when we give, and, and it comes from two, there's two aspects to this, okay? So I'll cover one aspect and then go back to the other. When okay. we give, um, we have to give with full abandonment. We don't give and say, um, this is, the, I expect you to come back and do this for me, or I'm gonna count all this. You can't do that. Even when I do a service, I don't think all of a sudden you're gonna, uh, just, I, I don't know, do something, uh, you know, owe me your life. <laughs> I, I, that, I don't think that. It, it's, it's, it's a straight out understanding between us. So that's good. But when, when I give with a full heart, say I help somebody who is homeless, or if I help somebody with whatever, mm. I give with full abandon and I don't expect anything. And then the gifts come in other forms. Now, there's an, also another side. And it's knowing what we're worth. As I, Jesus said, we do not cast pearls to swine. Yes, 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 yes. But that doesn't mean we're, we're going to be judgmental on who's a swine or not. But we know in our heart who is taking advantage of us and who's not. And if someone takes advantage of us one time, we just don't go back and do it again. Okay, I but get it that. Is giving, it is giving with an open heart. And it's also knowing that when we, and if our back does hurt because of arthritis, then we say, I can't do that right now. But I can help you in other ways. Do you understand? Yes, I do. I do. It's a combination of honoring yourself, trusting in guidance and, and in, in the law of the universe, and and learning from experience 
I get that. Okay. I get that. I get that. Okay. All right. Who else would like to comment? This is a discussion group, guys. <laughs> okay. I, can you hear me? I can. Hello there. <laughs> Hello. So um, I just had a discussion uh, or a question or a comment about uh, the last lady. Della, is that right? No, that was Fiji. Fiji. Okay. Um, so we, the question is like her, she had an example of, of her um, fiance um, giving, uh, I mean, the story of her fiance giving, um, I don't know if that, that was, I don't know. But giving her, um, saying to her, well, I did this for you. Okay, so he's doing what you're saying, you know, for her not to do. So how does she, she or one deal with that? Because, you know what I mean? Yes, I, yes, you're talking about the social thing. So, all right, so we have this guy who said, oh, well, I did all this for you three times. Yeah. And you can get into what is called, um, Excuse the expression, but it truly is a pissing match. <laughs> Where he, she says this and he says that, and it goes back and forth, and all you're doing is just, you know, uh, and I, and so you kind of have to just look at him and say, you know, all right, I, I get that, and I'm so grateful that you did that, and I'd love to help you in another way, but my back is killing me, and I know you don't want me to hurt my back, and I would prefer if I could help you some other way. Maybe I can make you a special dinner tonight or something like that. You have to, you have to know your own self-worth and you can't let somebody else's lack and owing, so-called owing, because he didn't give freely. And then he has expect, expectation to change where you are on the vibration scale, to go down into that lack and start getting angry and saying, but I did this for you, or put herself in pain where she doesn't feel good. She has to stay where she knows that she needs to be to give the best that she can. And she's not forsaking him. She's not going with a greedy heart. She's not getting mad, but she's saying, I just can't do this right now, but I can do something else for you. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. I was just concerned about um, if she, uh, how she would be able to handle that. Because it sounded to me like um, that that was part of it. Oh, can you hear that? It's thundering here. <gasps> Are you up north? I'm in Maryland. You're in Maryland? In Maryland, Maryland. Oh, you're in Maryland. Yeah. Cool. Cause it's not thundering here. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you guys hear? Did you guys hear that? Yeah, I did. It's big. Okay. okay. I just, I, so I'm just thinking like, that. That's where it sounded like. Um, is it, it? It felt like when she was speaking, like like she felt bad when he said that and would do something. And so yeah, yeah. that felt like it. What that was. The, the, the difference yeah. needs to be made that, that, that she doesn't need to feel bad and she gets, no. like you said, no. be able to say, um, you know, what you said. Yeah, I can do something else for you. Yeah. And, and, and or, or do nothing, or do nothing. Or do nothing if I'm in pain, you know, because, hey, and bring yeah. to that realization. And why in the name of heaven would he be pushing you when you're in pain? You know, you have to, that give, 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 give him a chance to give. So if somebody is doing something for you and they say to you, well, I did this. I mean, can you, can you explain to them what you're saying somehow? Yes. You know, yes. can you explain to them like, like, I don't want you doing that for me if you're going to do it and then expect me, I don't know. Is there a way? For no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like enlightening them, enlightening them. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, enlighten them. Yeah, no, I, people are funny and they don't take kindly to us forcing enlightenment down their throat. But it is a wake up call, and some of my wake up calls have come kind of like that. So you can say, you know, um, uh, you can say something if it's someone that you you can say, well, I didn't understand that was contingent. 
you know? And you can say, if you want to enlighten them, I said, I I'd love to give with a free heart. I don't always like to have, you know, I don't like to keep you on tabs. Are you keeping me on tabs? I've said something like that. And that does make them think and stop. You can go that route or you can just say, listen, I can't do that right now. And I'm so grateful for what you've done. Mm -hmm. But, and I'll, I'll be happy to help you in another way. Or when I can do it, I am there for you. You know, but you, you can bring it around any way you want. The thing is not to make an enemy out of them, but to also show them that you're not a doormat. And, and you can always add in there that, hey, this isn't a contingent thing. I'm not adding score. Why are you keeping score? You know, and that's important, especially if it's a marriage or a fiance, because that could go on the whole marriage. Let's get that right out on the table right now. We're not, we're not keeping score. Marriage is built on kindness. Kindness every day, little kindnesses towards each other. And expecting that, I, that we're going to do something is not kindness. Okay? So if you're in a marriage, you can be a little more direct that way. The guy on the street, you might want to try the other one. <laughs> All right, Tammy, thank you. Tammy's painting, I love it, I love it, I love it. That's one talent I would love to have, I do not have. Oh, look at it. Oh my gosh, put it up to the camera more. Make a noise, Tammy, so we can see. Okay, yeah, this is my abstract stuff. Can you look see it? Look at that, yes. That's beautiful. I like. Yeah. Yay. She's, she's doing well. Yeah. Oh, and she, thank you. And she's, I've been doing these abstract ones and it's been fun. Yeah. I like them. I like them. Thank you. I'd like to try that someday. All right. Oh. So we have Gladius who joined. We have a, quite a few others guys, you know, Gladius, Pat Davis, Carolyn and Kiwana Carr. I hope I got that right. What do you guys think? You're all sitting there just kind of, and also a number. Okay, so whoever's there, you know, I'd like to hear from you. Bring something up, disagree, agree, uh, ask a question, something. Hi, everybody. This is Hi, Carolyn. Carolyn, how are you feeling? I'm, I'm doing a little better today. So I was trying to save my voice. But um, ooh, ooh. thank you, my earth angel, Della, but, um, and my daughter. But oh. um, yeah, I just wanted to chime in. And say hello to everybody. Wow. Hi. Hi, hon. So what do you go ahead? The conversation is very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, hon. Good. Well, we, since you're not feeling well, I totally understand. I thank you so much for chiming in. And I'm glad you're getting something from it because it's important. And you know, the service that we do, it is, it is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, mostly I'm talking about giving that money tree, but it has changed into, you know, feeling that we're taken advantage of or not. And, and we do not, never ever do we have to give. We give with a full heart, but we don't give when it feels not right for us. If we feel like we're being taken advantage of, if we feel that it is, and, and you, you know, and I'm not talking about, you know, using judgment, but if you know that this person is really just, you know, using you, then, then you're tossing to swines. You're giving your pearls to swines, you know? And you've got to think, it's what feels good to you too, when you feel, because this is the thing, guys, and this is really important. When we give with an open heart, it's not with begrudging feeling. It's with joy. And if we feel like we're being taken advantage of, or that this person has hurt us in some way, then that joy goes away. And then you're back in the lack. Oh, look at, I was taken advantage of, and, and you know, this person's cheating me and you're down there on that low. You don't need to be there. That's where they want to be. 
You know, one time I was in New York City and um, I got lost, which is nothing new. I get lost in New York City all the time. And so I had to walk five blocks. Yes, I know it's a sinful grid. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I was still lost. So anyway, I finally found the place. And as I was walking back, and as I was lost, I noticed all these homeless people. And as I was walking back, I saw this stand for bananas. And he had two bunches for $2. And so that gave me 12 bananas because there were six in a bunch. I thought that's a pretty darn good price and why not do this? So I took those two bunches of bananas and as I was walking back, I gave one to every homeless person I saw. Now that made my heart sing. And I truly believe that the gift I got back you know, money didn't just flow down to the trees. No, this was a different kind of thing. What I got as the biggest gift is that each one was sharing their story. Each one was talking to me. They were so grateful that it was fruit and not bread. <laughs> Everybody always gives them something from Starbucks, you know. But, but I really thought a banana. And they were so grateful for that. Yeah. And they wanted to talk. They, they shared stories or they shared what was going on. Or some of them were telling me I got my resumes out on such and such. And I mean, the connection made my heart sing. That's giving. Yeah. And it's not expecting anything. And the gifts that come back, it enlightened me. It gave me more knowledge about their situation. Yeah. And it just... I felt like I was the one, one receiving much more than I had gave. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, that's, and that led me to thinking, you know, of opening a scholarship program for people who need it, which I did at that time. And, and giving, which brought more clients in, which is the receiving. Do you see? So yeah. it's serving in a way that both, then you can bring, you start, it brings in your creative spirit into how to create something for people. So yeah, I did receive a much more. Do you understand how that works? It's in giving that we receive. And it's and when you put on your creative spirit because you've been giving so much, it opens your mind to serving. It opens your mind to serving. And that's when you can be like Steve Jobs and say, okay, I am going to create a wonderful computer that people can hold in their hands. Or, or who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Einstein, the great yeah. things he gave our whole universe. Do you know what that man used to do? He used to do two things. I, I mean, incredible scientists. I keep saying to my son, who's a physicist, I keep saying to an, an optics person, and I say to him, Stevie, you've got to keep that giving, loving spirit, that innovative, because that's going to feed into your science. He used to have his chauffeur drive him to a field every day where he would stand, um, he'd go out into the field with his violin, he would sit out there, look up at the universe, and then just play his violin with a tear in his eye. So filled with wonder, love, and gratefulness. Then once a week, he'd gather all the coins that he had collected during the week, and he would go down to a street he knew was very, you know, full of a lot of people that were uh, down on their luck. And he would hand out coins to all the kids. It wasn't getting anything, in, but then this man would go back into his studio and because of that gratitude, because of that open heartedness and wanting to serve so, he made some of the most profound discoveries in our universe. It opened his mind to something bigger so that he could bring creation into this world. Do you see? That's what it does. It puts you on the vibration of the innovators, the scientists, the, the, 
world changers. And that's also where money is because that's where all the giving and receiving happens. Okay. I don't know how to get this up again. I'm like, whoops, no, that wasn't it. <laughs> no, that's not it either. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing with that thing. All right. So anyway, any other comments or questions? And Della, what time is it? I don't, I can't see time on this thing. Why don't they give me time on my Zoom? It is, it's 7.14. Oh gosh, we went late. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Yeah, it says on my email that you guys start at seven, but you start at six. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, we changed. You know why we changed it, Tammy? Because so we're gonna make it? Yes. <laughs> Really? Yeah, that was it right there. <laughs> no, actually, um, we are being asked to uh, go on location once a month, but he said if I could change the time, it's up at, in Grable. And what I'm going to do is add a wonderful meditation to that, too. So not only do I do this, but then I do a meditation. And you guys, you'll still be on Zoom. And what we'll do is then we'll do a meditation so that you actually go, I'll take you on a journey meditation where you can start to absorb these thoughts, even talk to the universe about these thoughts. Who knows? And this will be at six o'clock on Thursdays, like it is? O'clock on okay. Thursdays. And from now on, I think what I'm gonna do, Della, from now on, you gotta tell me when it's 6.40, so that I can okay. get the meditation. <laughs> okay. Because okay? then I, I wanna do the meditation. We miss, I talk too long. Thank you so much, Elaine. I just want to tell you thank you. Your words are just life-giving, and it's so good to hear. Well, Tammy herself I, has gone through major growth this past week, and I am so ultra proud of her. Mm. I really am. I mean, that was a big growth. So, yay! Yeah. We should all yeah. be proud of her. I'm very proud of her. Yeah, and thank you for the compliment, hon. Yeah, I'm glad you're part of the group. I'm glad for all of you. Gladius, I see you're on. You missed a lot. Please, please, please listen to it again. See what you think. And now next week, I want to hear your comments. I always value what you say. And Carolyn, please feel better. BJ, I love you. You know it. You, brought it. you got everything. You, you just brought it to light in a different way that I love. And Kiwana Carr, I hope next time I get to hear from you. I love your photo. It's beautiful. And it I is. I don't know who 170 is, but welcome, and I hope to hear from you in the future. Practices, give it a shot. Check out this book if you like. You know, I think it's on, um, yeah, it's on, you can, it, it's not long, and, and it's one of the best universal laws books that I know out there to this date. And it's simple, it's not a hard read, but boy, it brings it home. And I think you can get this online, and I think you can read part of it free. It's Working with the Law with Raymond Holloway. Okay? All right. I love you all. Guys, check out the seven-day reset for your own inner calm. You know, that calmness is what also helps you to start opening up to the big world. And you can start to act with clarity and with more understanding. So it's a little videos for seven days. Give it a shot. Pat Davis, thank you for being on. I'm sorry I didn't see. I can't see everybody, but I'm so glad you were on. All right. Always. Oh, and if you want to join that reset, go to soulmanifesto.com. It's right there. Just click on it. Put your name in and you get the videos like that. Magic. <laughs> Always. Spirit is love, folks. And when we grow more and more in that love, that's when we live with spirit. Okay. Namaste. Have a great week of gratefulness, happiness, joy, and receiving and giving. All right. Good night. Good night, Elena. Love you. Good night. Love you all. Bye. Bye bye, guys. Good night, all. Stay safe. Good night. Storm. Bye, Gladius. <laughs> Good night. Oh, Elena. Elena? Okay.